Welcome back to the AR-15 barrel series. Today, we'll be looking at a barrel that was just recently released from Unrivaled Technologies. The barrel was given to me by Zach Smith, who is one of the co-owners of Unrivaled. In this video, we will first go over the specs, then take a closer look at things on the bench, and after that, we'll head to the range to shoot some 30-shot groups. The barrel is rather unique and has a few interesting features about it. It's 16.69 inches long with a rifle length gas system. The extra length was added to allow for more dwell time to ensure increased reliability compared to a 16 inch barrel with a rifle length gas system. The barrel also has a heavy profile with aggressive fluting, which was done with the intention of reducing weight and maintaining rigidity. The gas port is sized to run any ammunition and any carrier or buffer weight combo. So it's advised to use the barrel in conjunction with an adjustable gas block. Other than those features, there's nothing too out of the ordinary with the rest of the specs. It's chrome lined, hand lapped, has a 223 wild chamber, 1 to 8 twist, half by 28 threads, 0 0.750 gas block journal, and it also comes with a head spaced BCM bolt. And we'll start off the inspection with the throat erosion gauge. And this barrel is starting out at a 1 on this gauge. Next, we'll use a 223 wild chamber function gauge from Pacific Tool and Gauge and a new stripped JP bolt to see if the chamber and throat are at least minimum size. And the bolt is able to spin, so this barrel passes. Next, we have a 5.56 NATO minimum headspace gauge from Forrester to check minimum headspace. And the bolt spins, so it passes. And here's a 223 no-go gauge from Forrester. And the bolt does not lock in place, so the barrel passes this gauge as well. Next, we'll move on to measuring some of the external dimensions, starting with the barrel extension. And the barrel extension is a little bit smaller than average, which will make installation easier, but may result in a looser fit with the upper receiver. And here is the gas block journal diameter, which comes in right about average, which should allow for easy installation of the gas block and make for a pretty good gas seal. The gas port accepted a 107 thousandths pin gauge. And since this barrel has a unique length and gas system, I don't really have anything to compare it to, but Unrivaled advises that an adjustable gas block is highly recommended. Next, we'll check out the inside of the barrel with my Teslong bore scope, which was kindly provided by Teslong. Starting with the chamber, everything looks fine. Nothing really much to see here. There don't appear to be any obvious defects. And here's a spin around the neck of the chamber. And there don't appear to be any significant defects here either. Everything seems to look fine to me. Here is a look around the throat. It looks to be cut pretty even. And it looks like there might be the slightest bit of roughness on the right side of the rifling lands in the lead. It looks to be very minor and isn't really a concern to me, but there appears to be just the slightest bit of roughness there. For comparison, here's a barrel from Bear Creek Arsenal, and you can see that things are quite a bit more rough on the BCA, so the roughness on the Unrivaled is really just being nitpicky. As you can see, it could certainly be much worse. Moving on, here's a look at the rifling. Everything looks great. No issues that I see. Everything looks nice and consistent. And here is the gas port which looks fine to me. No concerns here. And last, here's a spin around the crown. And to my eyes, there don't appear to be any significant defects here either. Okay, next up we will go over the shooting setup. The barrel was fit into an up receiver from Bad Attitude Department with a rail from Expo Arms, an adjustable gas block, and a BCM bolt carrier group with the supplied bolt that was matched to the barrel. The threads were greased and the barrel nut was torqued to the manufacturer's torque specification. The handguard was fitted with a 3 inch front bag rider. The stock was supported by a rear bag. An A5 buffer system was used with an A5-2 buffer and spring coat green spring. No muzzle device was used to prevent possible interference. The trigger was supplied by American Trigger Company and it's their AR Gold drop-in trigger that features a very clean break, short reset, and it's also drop safe. The bore was fouled with a few rounds before starting the first group. Scope is a DNT Optics The One 7 35 by 56 with a 34mm main tube, 110 MOA of elevation adjustment, and Japanese XED glass. The DNT optic is mounted in a reptilian mount that was supplied by Danger Space LLC. The mounting clamps were torqued to 45 inch pounds and the rings to 15 inch pounds. Parallax was set and checked using a head nod test. A Garmin 0C1 Pro chronograph was used to collect velocity data. A Mantis X10 Elite is mounted to the front of the handguard to keep track of rifle stability and detect any possible shooter-induced flyers. Groups were measured using the Ballistic X app. Each group is 30 shots fired consecutively over about 4 minutes. This simulates a match or practical type scenario where the barrel will get some heat into it, and it will also give us a decent sample size to work with. Between each group, I used a chamber chiller and leaf blower for cooldown. Distance was 100 yards. Point of aim was a small circle at the bottom of the target. Point of impact was set a few inches higher to preserve the aiming point. Wind was monitored with a ribbon. Each 30 shot group took about 4 minutes to shoot and was edited down to about 20 seconds. Today I'll be shooting 4 groups. 
First, we'll have Federal Gold Medal, 77 Grain, Sierra Match King. Next, we'll move on to Black Arc Munitions, NAS 3, 262 Alpha Load with 77 Grain, Sierra Match Kings, which was provided to the channel by Black Arc. So a big thank you to them for helping me out. And the third 77 Grain SMK Load is IMI Razor Core. And the last group we'll go over today is Winchester M193 55 Grain FMJ. And before we get started, for your reference, here is the best 30 shot group that I've shot so far with an AR-15. It was with a Sons of Liberty Gunworks SPR barrel shooting Hornady 73 grain ELD match. All right, and with that all out of the way, let's do it. This first group that you're watching is a Federal Gold Medal 77 grain at Sierra Match Kings. And this stuff usually puts up some pretty solid groups. So we'll see what I'm able to get out of it today with the Unrivaled Barrel. The shooting felt good with this group on my end. I'm certainly not a perfect shooter, but none of the shots felt significantly off. Ejection looked good. Again, remember that I'm using an adjustable gas block, so keep that in mind. Wind was calm. The Garmin collected data from every shot. And the Mantis only missed one shot. And we end up with a really good looking group here. So we will finish up with the group and then take a closer look. All right, so the Federal Gold Medal 77 Grain Sierra Match Kings ended up with an average velocity of 2,560 feet per second, which gives us 1,120 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. And the velocity standard deviation was a bit high at 34 feet per second. Rifle stability looked fine with an average of 99.6 and the Elite Stable Shot at 99.2. Shot 30 was the slowest of the group at 46 feet per second below the average, and shot one was the fastest at 76 feet per second over the average velocity. And we ended up with a pretty solid group that is nice and round without any real outliers. Before going over the group stats, we'll go over my AZ score real quick for the new folks. So AZ stands for A Zone Equivalence Distance, and it gives you the maximum distance where the calculated group size would still fit into a USPSA A Zone. The reason why I use this score is because it's easier for me to make sense of the group numbers compared to looking at the raw mean radius numbers. And we ended up with a 30 shot group size of 1.462 MOA and a mean radius of 0.394 MOA, which gives us a pretty impressive AZ score of 358 yards. Or if you want some more conventional numbers to look at, if we break the 30 shot group down into three 10 shot groups, the average 10 shot group size is 1.1 MOA. And if we compare the performance of the unrivaled barrel to the other groups that I've shot with the Federal Gold Medal 77 grain at Zero Match King, the Unrivaled comes in second place with its AZ score of 358 yards, which is just 20 yards behind the Proof Research Barrel in first place with its score of 378 yards. So, a pretty solid performance out of the Unrivaled Barrel with the Federal Gold Medal. Let's move on to the next group. Before moving on, I would like to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the content and found it useful, it would help a lot if you could tip the channel with a $2 super thanks so I can buy more ammo and equipment to help grow the channel. Thanks, let's get back to it. Here is the next group, which is the NAS 3 262 Apple load that was provided by Black Arc Munitions. Unfortunately, with this load, the target camera overheated and stopped recording after the first three shots. So that was frustrating. Anyway, this ammo utilizes a Shell Shock Technologies two piece shell case that has a few advertised benefits. This includes increased case volume, which can allow for a larger powder charge and increased velocity. So we'll see what we get here today. The shooting felt fine on my end with this group. Not that every shot was exactly perfect, but I felt like I was shooting to my potential. Wind was calm. Ejection was pretty consistent at about 3.30 or 4 o'clock. The Mantis picked up every shot, and the Chronograph missed one shot. And we end up with a pretty decent group. So, we will finish up the group, and then take a closer look. Okay, so the Black Arc had an average velocity of 2,867 feet per second, which is quite fast for a 77 grain load. And that results in over 1,400 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. And we also had a pretty solid velocity standard deviation at 16 feet per second. Rifle stability looked fine with an average of 99.6 and the least stable shot showing a score of 99.0. Shot number 30 was the slowest of the group by a decent margin at 60 feet per second below the average. And shots 7 and 15 tied for the fastest at 15 feet per second over the average. And we ended up with a pretty good looking group that's a little bit taller than it is wide. And also shot number 11 there off to the left. 30 shot group size ended up at 1.840 MOA with a mean radius of 0.480 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 294 yards. And with that, we will start the next group. Okay, here's the third load that is shooting the 77 Grand Serial Match King bullet. This is the IMI Razor Core, which is priced a little bit lower than the Federal or Black Arc. So we'll see what kind of performance I'm able to get out of this. The IMI Razor Core is rated to the same velocity as Black Hills Mark 262, 
which is 2,750 feet per second out of a 20 inch barrel. So we'll see what, what we get out of this 16.69 inch unrivaled barrel. And with this group, again, the shooting felt fine on my end. The AR Gold trigger is nice to work with and has a very consistent feel to it. Wind was calm, ejection was nice and consistent again. Both the Garmin and Mantis captured all the shots, so that was nice. And we ended up with a bit of a narrow and tall group. Anyway, we'll finish up the group and then take a closer look. The IMI Razor Core came in with an average velocity of 2,768 feet per second, which is unexpectedly fast for a 16.69 inch barrel, considering that the load is rated for 2,750 feet per second out of a 20 inch barrel. So that usually concerns me a bit when I see such unexpectedly high velocity, but I did look at the brass afterwards and there weren't any hugely significant signs of overpressure that I saw. So I guess you can make of that what you will. Muzzle energy came in at 1,310 foot-pounds, and we had a pretty good velocity SD at 18 feet per second. Rifle stability looked fine with an average of 99.7 and the least stable shot at 99.3. Shot 10 was the slowest of the group at 44 feet per second slower than the average, and shot 20 was the fastest at 36 feet per second above the average. And we ended up with a pretty decent group that is a little bit taller than it is wide. 30 shot group size came in at 2.550 MOA with a mean radius of 0.655 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 215 yards. And if we break the 30 shot group down into three 10 shot groups, the average 10 shot group size is 1.8 MOA. And if we compare this to the other groups that I've shot with the IMI Razor Core, the Unrivaled comes in fifth place out of eight groups with this load at just five yards behind the Triarch, which came in fourth place and 52 yards behind the Proof Research Barrel in first place. And with that, we will move on to the next group. Moving on to the Winchester M193 55 grain FMJs, obviously I don't expect this load to produce the tightest group out of this selection of ammunition, but I think it's interesting to compare the performance of different ammo types to see what you might gain or lose with match or mid-tier ammo versus a bulk FMJ load. So we'll see what we end up with here. Anyway, shooting felt fine again on my end. Wind was calm, like it usually is. The Garmin and Mantis captured data on every shot. Ejection was consistent. And again, I am using an adjustable gas block, which I actually had set too aggressively for this load. The last round did not lock the bolt back. So that was my fault for not properly adjusting the gas block. Anyway, we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. The Winchester M193 has an advertised velocity of 3,180 feet per second out of a 20 inch barrel and the 16.69 inch unrivaled clocked in with an average velocity of 3,247 feet per second, which again is much higher than expected for this barrel length. And here's a quick look at the brass, which looks to have some amount of primer cratering. And there are also some ejector marks, which indicates that there may have been some amount of overpressure. Getting back to the numbers, we got 1,287 foot pounds of muzzle energy and a velocity SD of 27 feet per second. Rifle stability looked good with an average of 99.7 and the least stable shot at 99.3. And the group looks like how most Winchester M193 groups look, which is pretty ugly and a bit erratic. A 30 shot group size came in at 4.082 MOA with a mean radius of 0.990 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 143 yards. And if you want a more conventional number to look at, the average 10 shot group size was 2.9 MOA. And here's the leaderboard for Winchester M193. And the unrivaled barrel comes in second place out of eight groups with this ammo, just five yards behind the proof research barrel. So a pretty solid performance for the unrivaled barrel with the Winchester M193. And here are the overall results I was able to get with the unrivaled barrel. Keep in mind that I am not a perfect shooter. So all these groups could likely be at least a little bit better. Also, this is my experience with one barrel. Different barrels from the same manufacturer can shoot better or worse sometimes. And of course, this barrel may have performed better or worse with different ammo. That said, I was able to get the best group with the Federal Gold Medal with an AZ score of 358 yards, followed by the Black Arc at 294 yards, then the IMI Razor Core at 215 yards, and Winchester M193 came in at 143 yards. All of the velocities came in quite a bit higher than I would have expected for a 16.69 inch barrel, so that was interesting. And the Black Arc NAS3 262 Alpha had the most muzzle energy at 1,405 foot-pounds and also had the lowest SD at 16 feet per second. And here is the best group leaderboard. So this is the single best group per barrel with any ammo. And the unrivaled barrel comes in fourth place out of 25 barrels, which makes it the highest ranking chrome line barrel on the list so far. So a pretty good showing from Unrivaled. Let me know your thoughts about this barrel in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Later.